Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. I'm Joy Connolly. I'm the provost of the Graduate Center and very, very happy to have you here. I'm going to take just about 90 seconds, although don't, don't time me, uh, to, to give you a, a warm welcome and to say how happy I am as a humanist. I'm a, I'm a classicist. Uh, so I'm very happy to see this collaboration and, and uh, exchanging of ideas, uh, networking and learning to go on in the area of, of fundraising for the arts and humanities. Uh, there, I understand that uh, this is the, the third joint effort by the office here of research and sponsored programs and uh, the Research Foundation's Office of Award Pre-Proposal pre Support. Uh, apps. Uh, I understand it's the third time you've collaborated, but the first time you're including institutional advancement. So that's a great step forward, uh, especially in this area in arts and humanities. So I'll, I'll, I'm also happy to hear, I just learned this a few minutes ago, that you're including students in the day. And I hope a, a bunch show up. It, 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 uh, and, and I hope there's a lot of, of good cross discussion. It reminds me of the very first fundraising phone call I ever did. Uh, and I, I don't know if this was legal, frankly. I must have been about 14. Uh, and uh, and the, the board and the office of, uh, of, of fundraising, which I think it was called then, at my high school, um, put a bunch of high school students to work on the phones calling alums. So, um, but it was a really good, a good experience because I, was, uh, I had the opportunity to, uh, to explain to these people why I really loved the school, which fortunately I did, uh, and, uh, and what I found special about it. And it made me think in a bigger way, even as a teenager, uh, about the education that I was getting. So I hope that the students uh, ha in particular have a good conversation with all of you who work so hard to secure the funds to make what we do uh, at the Graduate Center, at, the very, at the, all the colleges of CUNY, uh, in higher education and arts and humanities possible. So with that in mind, I wish you a wonderful day of exchange among yourselves, among your partners, uh, with faculty, administrators, staff, students. Have a good day, and I look forward to hearing more about it uh, at the end. Good morning. Also, good morning. Um, for those of you who don't know me already, I'm Edith Gonzalez. I'm the head of the Office of Research and Sponsored Programs here at the Graduate Center. And again, I just want to thank the Research Foundation and Institutional Advancement for, let's pulling, the, for pulling the day together. Um, I wanted to just take a couple of minutes to give you a little bit of context about why we are doing the two sessions that we're doing. The morning session is going to be about partnerships. And in this landscape of constrained uh, available funding, we thought it best to talk about the kinds of things that make our projects, our research, have greater impact in our communities, our research communities, the, uh, the, with the public, and also make it more attractive to funders. So the, the initial morning session will be about partnerships. This, uh, this afternoon's session will be about creating relationships with your funders, which is also extremely um, important because the more we can get the more contact and deeper the relationship we have with funders, the more they care about what we're doing, and hopefully the more they care about it, the more they're willing to fund it. So we want to keep the day kind of light. So I'm, I'm sort of uh, behind this podium and feeling, oh, I'm behind this podium again. And I'm sure that you all are sort of like, OK, just not another PowerPoint slide, OK? So we decided to keep it less formal. Um, and so this morning, we're going to uh, talk about um, partnerships, but in the form of storytelling. So what we've asked our presenters to do is to come up and tell a story about a partnership. And they're, they're limited in time. They're going to wrap one. When they wrap up, we're going to have everyone um, on stage and open it up town hall style for whichever questions you want to ask. Um, and the whole idea about today is that so much of our work begins with a personal relationship. And I think about projects that I've been involved with as a researcher, as um, uh, what I like to call a matchmaker, putting people together in order to get funding. All of it begins with a personal relationship. So here's my story, and I'll keep mine quicker than the, the rest of the folks. The day, my day ended with a stream of expletives as I walked out of my boss's office and the sound of her laughter following me down the hallway. 
About nine months previous, I had come to her with this incredible funding opportunity for our institution. And together we had decided who would be the faculty PI on this project. And she assured me, even though he was a new faculty member, that he was going to be able to drive the, this project of um, arts and public education uh, programming, even though he was the science content dude. And about three months before the deadline, I checked in with him, hey, how's it going? And he said, oh yeah, everything's good. About two months before the deadline, I said, hey, how's it going? Can we see a, I don't know, a draft would be good about this time? Do you need help with the budget? Can I help you? Blah, blah, blah. Nothing. About three weeks before the deadline, I said, I actually need to read the proposal and we need to do the budget. And I got a one page of bullet points for a federal application. And I went to my boss and I said, what are we going to do here? And she said, well, Edith, you promised me that this was going to be the first time we did not let this deadline slip. So you have three weeks. Figure it out. And that was on a Friday at like 4 o'clock. And I walked out and was like expletive, expletive, Spanish expletive, German expletive, mother of pearl. And she heard me and she laughed. And she thought that was funny. I didn't think it was funny. So I went back to my desk and I just looked at um, what was then a Rolodex. <laughs> yeah, that's how long ago it was. So I'm flipping through my Rolodex and I'm like, okay, who could I convince to do this in three weeks? Who do I know in the building? Mm. The other thing she said is, I don't want to pay for something we're not already doing. I was like, oh, so it can't be a new project. So I went back through my emails. Who most frequently asked me for money was this great media project. They didn't have any you know, public education media thing going on. They didn't have any money. And I knew one person who had the same kind of science content that we needed. And we were pretty friendly. So I called her up and I was like, listen, I know you're a night owl. This is how it's going to work. I will get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and I will write the standard grants language institutional piece of this from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. when I have to get my kid to school. And then I will get my kid to school, come into work, do my actual other job. And when you receive the proposal sometime around 1 o'clock, you work on it until 6 o'clock. Then I will go pick my kid up from school, take him home, get him fed, read what you've done, and I will edit from about 8 o'clock to 10, 11, until I fall asleep at the computer and send it back to you. And then I will get up at 4 and we will do this. And we did that for three weeks. And we got it in on no sleep. And... It got funded, miraculously. I, at the end of it, I had no idea what it said, but it must have been good. It was like in a dream state, stream of consciousness, writing about this arts and science program. Um, and the folks who did the media, who were the, the real artists doing this big media project, it funded them for five years at a multi-million dollar level. And the only reason it happened was because in my desperation, I called the people that I had a personal relationship with and said, are you willing to risk the investment of your time to do this? And because I knew them, and they were like, sure, if you're willing, I'm in, we're game. And we had to be each other's cheerleaders with coffee, lots of coffee, to get it done. So I guess the moral of my story is for you. If your research and sponsored programs officer calls you and says, hey, I have this thing, and it's a really short deadline, and we have to get it done, but I think you'd be good for it, open the door. Take a chance. <laughs>